Okay, just warning you now, this video is going to be filled with the use of the Amazon Echo trigger word. So if you're not listening with headphones, get ready for Alexa to lose her sh Alexa, activate nuclear reactor. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add Alexa voice control to your next project. Alexa, set nuclear reactor power to 50%. And how with some creativity, it doesn't have to just be a light. Alexa, make nuclear reactor warmer. Alexa, set nuclear reactor to red. What is it with you and this nuclear reactor? Howdy, I'm Michael. Welcome to Maker at Play, where I like to share my Maker project builds with you. I also like sharing tips and techniques to help you with your projects. If you're a fellow maker or just like to see cool projects, I'd love to have you as part of the Maker at Play community. This video is the first in a series of videos that I'm calling Tools for the Maker's Tool Belt. The idea is to provide techniques or tools that you can use in your projects to give them a new feature or a wow factor. These tools are not meant to be standalone projects, but to be used as part of a larger project. Think of them as a widget that you can build off of. I'm not sure exactly how many videos I will have in this series yet, but for now I expect it to be more than two to justify calling it a series. I don't want to set the bar too high yet. Who knows what squirrel might distract me before I finish this series. Okay, the first tool in my maker's tool belt, man, I hope that phrase doesn't become corny and annoying by the end of this series, is Alexa voice control. This tool should also work with Google Home and Apple smart speaker thing, but it's so darn easy with Amazon Echo, I have not tried it with any other smart speaker brands that are out there. Adding voice control to your project by using an Echo Dot can be very simple and really gives your project more of a wow factor. I mean, really, would your friends be more impressed with you if you pressed a button or tapped your phone screen to activate your nuclear reactor? Or just by yelling, Alexa, activate the nuclear reactor. So how do we do this? Well, by lying to Alexa and telling her something we're not. You know, like you do in your online dating profile. Alexa has this relationship with a guy named Philip. And if we pretend to be Philip, she will order us around just like if we were dating her. So how does this really work? The Amazon Echo has built in support to be able to control a Philips Hue bridge with extended color lights. This means that you don't have to create your own Alexa skill or even install anything on your Alexa for it to work. All you have to do is have Alexa discover your device that is pretending to be a Philips Hue bridge and it will just work. This also means it should work with any smart speaker or application that supports control in Philips Hue's bridge. Okay, this is where we're going to geek out and get more technical about exactly how this works. Because if you're like me, you want to pop open the hood and see exactly what makes the magic happen. I will walk through all of the steps of the back and forth of the network calls that makes this work. I will not get into the actual source code in this video, but I do have another video where I walk through all of the Arduino C++ code that runs on the ESP32 to make this happen. I will link that video as it is on my Maker at Play coding channel. The process starts with having Alexa discover your device. First, it sends out a discovery message. Next, it fetches the description XML from the discovered device. Then it creates an authorized user on the device. Then fetches a list of lights from the device. And finally, it fetches the current state of each light. Now let's see it in action. This is as simple as just saying, Alexa, discover new devices. Starting discovery. This will take a few moments. Power on your new devices now. And if needed, put them in pairing mode. Alexa uses universal plug and play or UPnP protocol to discover the Hue bridge on the network and to get its IP address. More exactly, it uses the simple service discovery protocol that is incorporated into the UPnP protocol stack. For the first step in the discovery phase, Alexa will send out a discovery request via multicast. Here's what that request looks like. It is an HTTP message known as an M search message sent over UDP to the multicast IP on port 1900. The Hue bridge and thus your device must respond to this request via a unicast message back to Alexa, providing Alexa the location of the description XML file that is fetched in the next step. Here's what a response message looks like. The response is an HTTP message with seven headers. The location header provides the URL for the description XML. This URL should be the IP address of your device, which will act as a web server listening on port 80 to serve up the XML file. Even though you could send a different port number back in the location header, it appears that certain generations of the Amazon Echoes expect port 80 to be used. They will not work with a different port number. Now that Alexa has a URL, it will make a web call to that URL to get the description XML file. Here's an example of the file that we must return. This XML is what tells Alexa that we are a Philips Hughes bridge. Thus, we need to keep the values in this XML the same as what the real Hue bridge would send. Now that Alexa thinks we are a Philips Hue bridge, it will now do an HTTP post to this URL to create an authorized user on the device as part of the Hue bridge security protocol. Here, you can decide how concerned you want to be about the security of the API access to your device. The real Hue bridge requires you to press a physical button on the device in order for the user to be created. For my device, I don't require anything and just return a constant value. Once Alexa gets a username, it now makes a web call to this URL to fetch all of the lights from the Hue bridge. 
The real Hue Bridge has a limit of 50 lights and returns a JSON array of the lights that have been set up on it. And finally, for each light that was returned in the JSON array, Alexa will call this API to fetch the current state of each light. And at this point, Alexa should announce to us all the lights that it found, and we should see them listed in the Alexa app on our phone. I found nuclear reactor, and you can control it by saying, turn off nuclear reactor. Now that Alexa knows about our device, what kind of commands can we send to it? Since we told Alexa that our device is a Philips Hue bridge with an extended color light connected to it, Alexa will send all of the commands that a Philips extended color light supports. We can break those commands into three groups. There are the on and off commands like turn on light or turn off light. Alexa though is smart enough to handle other phrases for these actions. For example, Alexa treats activate light the same as turn on light and activate nuclear reactor sounds cooler than turn on nuclear reactor. You can experiment with other phrases and see what Alexa understands. If you find some new cool phrases, make sure and share them in the comments for this video. The next group of commands are for controlling the brightness of the light. These commands allow you to set the light brightness between zero and 100%. You can say things like Alexa set light to 50% or set power to 100%. You can also change the brightness by using the word dimmer or brighter, which decreases or increases the current brightness of the light. For example, Alexa, dim nuclear reactor. The third set of commands are for setting the color of a light. This is where things can get complicated, but also where we can be the most creative because of the sheer number of commands in this group. There are three ways to set the color of Philips Hue light. We can set the color temperature, which is varying shades of white, or we can say a color, which will send a hue and saturation value to the light. This also supports setting a color by XY coordinates based on this color diagram. But I have not seen Alexa use XY coordinates so we will be ignoring this option. So let's walk through some examples of each of these commands so that you know exactly what data to expect from Alexa. Of course, this is all designed to control a light, but this is where your creativity comes in to repurpose the data Alexa sends to your device to match the goal of your project. For example, when I say Alexa set nuclear reactor power to 50%, Alexa makes this API call to my device because it thinks I want to set the light named nuclear reactor to 50% brightness but I can take the brightness value of 128 and do whatever I want with it. I don't have to actually change the brightness of a light. I can change the speed of a motor or start a timer, move a stepper motor a number of steps, or even play a sound. It is up to your imagination what set power to 50% means for your device. Be creative and have fun. The brightness command will always send a value between one and 254 in the JSON property name BRI. But Alexa only supports you saying zero to 100 as a percentage which is then converted to a value between one to 254 before calling your API. Alexa sends a value of one for 0%, a value of 128 for 50%, and 254 for 100%. When you tell Alexa to dim nuclear reactor, it takes the current brightness percentage of the light and reduces it by 25%. And it increases by 25% when you use the word brighter or say Alexa increase nuclear reactor. Again, keep in mind that Alexa handles many different phrases for the same command. Now let's talk about color temperature. I'm going to keep this high level, but if you want to get really into the details, I suggest you check out the Hue developer website. I will put a link to that page below. Hue supports color temperatures from 2000 Kelvin, which is considered warm with more orange tones, to 6500 Kelvin, which is considered cold with more blue tones, but uses a scale called Myrick. Using this scale, the warmest color, 2000 Kelvin, is 500 Myrick, and the coldest color, 6500 Kelvin, is 153 Myrick. Alexa will send the Myrick value in the JSON property named CT when you use temperature phrases like set warm, set cool, set warmer, set colder. Also, when you set the color to white, here's a chart of the color temperature values sent for each of the shades of white listed in the Alexa app. I have also observed that when you use warmer or colder, it increases or decreases the current color temperature by around 15, but it's not always a consistent 15. Here are a few examples of how the CT value changes as you repeat set colder or set warmer. And finally, there are the colors, like Alexa, set nuclear reactor to red or set nuclear reactor to turquoise. When you use the color keywords, Alexa will send that color using the hue and saturation value, which appears as the property names of hue and sat in the JSON. Here's a sample of the colors with their corresponding hue and saturation values. Again, this is where you can be creative with your project. For example, if your device was meant to be a game or maybe an escape room puzzle that someone must unlock with a color combination of red, yellow, green, you could write your device code to expect to receive these three API calls in order to open the puzzle. If you receive any other values or a different order, you could provide some kind of feedback that they got it wrong. The user could then trigger the API calls to your device 
that you name lock with the following voice commands. Alexa, set lock to red. Alexa, now set it to yellow. Alexa, now set it to green. Alexa is smart enough that you can say now set it to without having to repeat the name of the device. I'm sure you can think of many creative ways to use this. Now that this tool is in your maker's tool belt, go build something awesome and let me know about it with a comment below or tag me on social media.